Video viewers, pause this shit, put it on 240p. I want to see what it looks like. He's part. Uh, he's it probably man, looks inside. exactly the same. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up. Haha, -ha, I had a mic too. Patreon is not the only one. <laughs> So I just got at least mine was recorded. <laughs> so. Through the magic, uh, yeah, I'll just make it go honk, <laughs> like something like that. <laughs> hey, everyone, what's going on? I'm Ben. Next to me is Jordan. Next to him is Pedro, who's got a green thing on his shirt. It's terrifying. But together it's with you, slime. watching Spooch. us live on Twitch, helping us for cocaine, Voltron. Gentlemen, it is a new week. You know what? We're kind of in entering, as far as like gaming news, for the industry as a whole, like the dead time. It's the, you know, the, the pre-holiday stuff. Right. And they're like, no one's really releasing anything except for, you know, we were talking about in the pre-show, uh, like the Street Fighter 6. I think it's 6, Beta? 6, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've watched people play that going, the, like, maybe I should buy it. And I'm like, no, 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 danger, Will Robinson. But what have we been up to? Pedro, you uh, have discovered a game-breaking bug. <laughs> It, yeah, it, it becomes game breaking after about an hour. Uh, if you're playing online and never Winter Nights Enhanced Edition, uh, you may have noticed that your RAM consumption keeps going up and up and up and up. And then you close the game because you're wondering, like, what the hell is leaking memory? And it doesn't clear uh, all the buildup that it had up to that point. Yeah, that's because it's uh, filling up the inode uh, and the um, uh, de-entries cache and not cleaning up after itself so uh, after about an hour you have 10 gigabytes of ram that's being sucked up and even if you close the game it doesn't let go so you then you either reboot or uh you echo three to clear that particular cache and then issue a sync which yeah that's always fun but, but what does this have to do with dirt biking what there's a dirt bike game with the memory leak Oh, know. yeah, no, the motorbike game, no. Oh, man, that thing? <laughs> Speak, speaking of bikes. Keep your swap partitions, kids, or your swap files, whatever the case may be, just keep them. <laughs> As it turns out. How about you, Jordan Swing? What are you been up to? Anything exciting? Anything rocking your world this week, man? Just amazing, just dying to tell everybody, just sitting there vibrating, going, man, this is going to be awesome to talk about on Saturday night. Yeah, but then I forgot what it was. That happens. Uh, yeah, no, it's, again, it's been very busy, work-focused. Notice the grindstone trying to do the whole two-man two, two -man department thing where we need, like, four additional employees. So mm. that, that's, that's been keeping me busy. Um, Have you found anybody to fill the hole? No, we got 400 applicants to the position, though. Oh shit! Ooh. yeah, they're 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 they're, they're in pre-screening now. So I, I keep I keep getting bugged by the HR people. They're like, "Hey, we need you to come up with some interview questions for them." I'm like, "Okay, fine. I guess I have to do this because you know I, I was going to recommend that like the uh, Google Google used to have like a pre interface uh, pre interview service, but they killed it. Yeah, they they, they did, and they they also killed all those stupid brain teaser questions. I'm glad oh, because they were dumb good. as shit. Yeah, they were. How many yeah, barbers man. are in New York? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Enough. What yep. one one less now? Click click. <laughs> and you might notice uh, if you're watching the video version, Pedro is kind of fading in and out for whatever reason. It's like there might be an ocean between us. Yeah, no, the interwebs connectivities between the US and the UKs aren't doing terribly well tonight. Fortunately, Jitsi's <laughs> handling it like a champ. The audio is a video mic. He he he, you know, explores his eight bit mode. Yeah, no. <laughs> L look at my retro hipster <laughs> pixel face. <laughs> so there's your fair warning. I've been doing a bunch of stuff behind the scenes past couple of months. I've been moving our web zone off of Schnappy after 12 years. And it just finally got to the point to where I've talked to Jordan about this a couple of times. I don't mind something being down. What I get a problem with is uh, if something's down often or for long periods of time, I expect a postmortem. I want to know what's happening. I want an update. I want somebody to say, hey, this is what's going on. Not radio silence, because usually radio silence is, uh, at least in my world, if I'm not talking about someone's like, I fucked something up. I don't want to talk mm -hmm. about it. It was my fault. I want to talk about right. it. Right. <laughs> or like, we got problems that no one needs to know about. Pay no attention to the you know mask behind the curtain or whatever it is. And um, It's schnappy. It was. It was, man. Like, you at home, you 
probably never noticed. Personally, I never even noticed because we use the uh, Cloudflare, uh, what is it called? Uh, platform optimization plugin. Oh, always online edge cache. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, like, well, it's well, a thing tied it. into WordPress and um, mm-hmm. it does a great job. However it works, it's above my pay grade, but you know, it's like even smoldering crater in the ground. As long as you're doing the front end stuff, no problem. And I only ran into it. And like, I'm trying to log in, get things uploaded. Great. New, like, nope, just down <sighs> smoldering. It just happened too many times. So I got it moved over. Everything's sitting happily at the, um, how is that pronounced? Equinix? 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 Yeah, probably something to do with Equinox. Yeah. <laughs> um, happily, one of their data centers, and that's a large enough company to where if they have problems, the internet has problems. So mm. I feel a little more secure in that. And um, yeah, let me know. I'm sure a smoldering crater will happen tomorrow when I go to push everything out. If YouTube doesn't decide to take another 16 hours to process their video, which happened last week, or something like nine, but I'm like, really? Come on and get done. But also, here's the thing Google RSS feeds for the podcast. If you are like one of the three people that subscribe to the show on um, Google Podcast, yes, Google has a podcast client that they haven't killed yet. Yet, it might be dead tomorrow. That feed is not updated with a new structure. So that's why you're getting like 404s and stuff like that. I've tried to like send the signals to Google. I've Bounce out how to log back into that thing. It was like, I don't care. Apple of all people. I'm like, yeah, here's a button. Collect that. Done. Now, fortunately, 99% of um, any service that, you know, syndicates podcasts, they all just crib off Apple's RSS feed. So Google's the one outlier. Outside of that, man, I've been cruising eBay looking for Epic chips that are not from China. What do you think about buying a chip from China? Would you trust that? What what's the what's the dollar amount? I think processor is probably safe, just judging by the amount of them that uh, AliExpress has on sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know. I don't know. I, I think if I was paying like under two hundred, I'd be okay with like getting whatever I get. But two hundred, okay. Uh, yeah. I, any, anything over than that, it's like no. This is I'm dropping like real computer money on this. Well, hear me. Like we're we're thinking about like four to four eighty, which kind of puts me in the. <sighs> Yeah, that's pricey. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a little much to take a little risk on. Even Although if it's eBay, you, you have the eBay guarantee. If it's not right. what it says on the tin, then you're getting your money back. You're going to get your money back, and I, I don't even want to deal with it. And especially for when it's like, oh, yes, this is like a Chinese seller that's been selling for, you know, 10 years with 99%. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're probably going to get, but it's still like, yeah, it's that mystery boat, pack. right? Yeah, that's going to show up. I don't know. Uh I'm cruised around for that and uh, to eventually build our retro hipster epic uh, gaming PC. It's just going to piss the internet off. It'll be brilliant. Mm. So, uh, got to run an Intel Arc on that. <laughs> See, okay, this is like a legitimate downside. There is no resizable bar on Epic at all. Ah, so, boo. Boo. <laughs> Unlike the horse. Oh, I mean, I mean, the horse doesn't have resizable bar, but it is generally resizable because it's just a giant gelatinous mass. It's the steam. Congratulations, people. You want a deck? Oh, you can get a deck and you can get a deck and you can get a deck in about one to two two months. Reservations uh, are no longer required. If you want a Steam Deck, you can just order one on the internet and they will ship it to you. Well, how did Uh, I have to do it before? uh, You had to get a reservation and then you had to wait for your order to come up and then you had to go actually spend the money during uh with with the, once you get the reservation but uh apparently they've been doing pretty good in terms of fulfilling orders uh they are saying that if demand spikes uh that they may go back to a reservation system but for now it seems like they have adequate supply to just give anyone who wants a steam deck a deck assuming they're going to pay that is pretty good i yeah we, we, we were thinking that it was going to be like well into next year before we got to that point so. right like the earliest I was saying is like, oh, okay, maybe in December, maybe. But uh, the first video that they released, uh, they've now re-released that video without the um, Yuzu icon in one of these Ooh. slides that the internet was just losing their shit. Everyone Oopsie on Twitter doodle. is like, right. oh, 
oh, Yuzu on the, on the Steam Deck, and then they pulled it down and it brought it back up. But yeah, they also claimed wait, in the wait, video. Wait. You need to download that back. So they pulled that image? Uh, they just re- replaced the little scroller that appeared on the Steam Deck with a different game. <laughs> okay, so they <laughs> updated it where it didn't show Yuzu. Yeah. Yes. Then they added it back. Did they no. add it back? That's I don't. You said they added it back. That's why I stopped. And I'm like, what? No, the, they um, added the video back. They re-uploaded the new version. Now we're talking about uh, the video. Okay. Yeah, there, 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 yes. there's there's two versions of the video. One with Yuzu, one without. Current uh-huh. version mm-hmm. up there is the one without Yuzu. Yes. Okay, so they, they didn't put one back. They didn't like. No, they they didn't revert it to the old one with the copyright infringing emulator that Nintendo. No. <laughs> well, it, technically not copyright infringement, but yes, they did not. The, upload l- that listen again. <laughs> you're, you're, th- that's some anti Nintendo propaganda. Why don't yeah, you? Man. Why don't you Big take Mario. it easy on on Nintendo? They're just a tiny company. Upstart, yeah, they're man. such a poor company. But Dude, the thing that they mentioned hey, in the man, video. Listen, all they could only afford Chris Pratt. I mean, it's not <laughs> right. like they're rolling at it. <laughs> The thing that they mentioned in the video that kind of caught my attention was they claimed that the reservations had been going up, that they've been ever increasing. Uh, so that that's impressive that not only have the reservations, they keep increasing in number and um, they've still managed to say, yeah, you, n- now you can get your deck without reservation. That that well. Yeah, <laughs> we, we we've we've seen that they've been they've been replacing out parts like the they changed out the SSD because uh, supply chain issues, mm-hmm. and they're saying that like yeah the the supply chain seems to have stabilized for now mm-hmm. to the point where they're able to pump them out maybe maybe with slightly different hardware maybe some like different memory different SSDs but hey it's still a Steam Deck well I mean being able to get them into timely manner probably has a lot to do with um I keep track of uh, container cost for shipment. Mm. You know, you get stuff um, on the boat across the ocean, and it has almost returned to uh, ah. pre-pandemic pricing. So, like pre-boat getting stuck in the Suez yeah. Canal pricing, <laughs> things like that, man. But you might want something for your new deck, uh, which is one to two weeks. That's hmm. now you got to put your money where your uh, mouth is, though. That is uh, kind of the important thing because it's been really safe. Like, you know what? I'll order one when I can just buy one. Mm. Well, yeah. now. <laughs> what, what I meant by that was it would arrive next day. But but here 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 here's the it thing. It never did. Yeah. When they sent the email out, it's like you can pay the full price for the Steam Deck. It takes about a week for everyone. So so, so when 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 do, when are we expecting the Steam Deck two announcement? Mm-hmm. Now now that now that you can buy a Steam Deck is like. <laughs> by the way, here's the new hot shit coming out. Oh next no, year. you got to be like February twenty twenty three. Yeah, you got to be a ninja on eBay for that one because you got like six hours before the. Uh, oh, it's collectible now, mm-hmm. and like people are gonna run it like they did with the fuck mothering Wii U, which is a trash system that was selling for like eighty bucks. Now it's like three hundred bucks. Why? Mm. Collectible. But you wait for one or two weeks and you decide, you know what? I hate money. So I'm going to buy a Connect dock <laughs> yeah. from my deck. For the low, yeah. low price, ladies and gentlemen, of $89. That's right. Expected delivery one to two weeks. You can buy it now. We've been waiting on it. This was like a big tease for a long time. Not too big, not too small. It's just the right size of dock for your deck, baby. It's got all the things in it. I mean, when you order the deck, you get a 3D printer, uh, a couple of arcade fighting sticks, a guitar, uh, some <laughs> yeah, speakers. A, 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 a Valve-branded Les Paul? Sure, yeah, I kind of yeah. want one of those. Right on. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good value for 90 bucks, right? Yeah, but, but, a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of fight sticks. Um, <laughs> one, of, one of those hitboxes, too. Man, yeah, people people are... people. Speaking of fighting games, people are like really salty about those hitbox controllers. They don't like them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a little pricey. $90 for a USB 3 dock. It's not the most expensive uh, dock Jordan, I've seen. Jordan, like when we played Portal 2. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on an angle. So, so, so nice. So friendly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, ni- 90 bucks. Uh, I, I have like a, I have a cheap Chinesium USB 3 dock that I've been plugging into my Mac and using for a while. Um, it doesn't have, it doesn't have, or it, it does, it does have, uh, it does have UHD 60 support. This one does what? Um, 4K 60. 4, 4K 60. 1440, which, 120. So it it is a little bit better than your standard uh, cheapo uh, Amazon dock you might get for about like fifty bucks or whatever. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. 
It, and you can have both of those running at once. That's, yeah, that's nice. And compared to, say, the current available Dell WD-19 dock, that's cheap. That's ninety dollars, damn cheap. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for two hundred for that Dell doc. doc. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> I still um, the only thing I don't like about the doc, and I, I, it's not even I don't like it because I probably would never buy a doc in the first place. Is I just that plug-in the, cable? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, it, and I, I'm, from an engineering aspect of that, I start thinking about not the breakability of that. It's the quite the opposite. The ability for that thing to grip while you're heading out of the door, not paying attention. Yep. So the rest of the dock comes with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Depends the- on how tight the cables are at the back, because that uh, it's a full size display port. So that that cable is not going to let the dock go. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. I, yeah. Like you're going to have a bunch there. There's a Apple quit being dick holes. Let's About release MagSafe. MagSafe. Yeah. yeah. Please. <laughs> Wouldn't MagSafe just imagine like USB C? Type C would just make all kinds of sense. Like click magnet. Yeah, Im- imagine if the connector wasn't shit and would fall wouldn't fall out every thirty seconds. You could yeah, use it more than four times before it's getting squirrely on you, man. Yeah, yeah. Ser- seriously, seeing that um, client updates yeah. bring Jeez. video. We can finally. Um, yeah, it's amazing how quickly they get around to this because I think like less than two weeks ago, somebody had posted on our Steam Deck they were doing like a Seinfeld and. Uh, other TV. That's for some reason people really like to uh, customize the boot screens. You had the same thing with the uh, Pi Boy DMG. Exact same situation. Everyone was making custom uh, screens, but well, the Steam Deck came out, and as it turns out, you could just find the files and then replace them, including the sound. And instead of just having the uh, little turn on sound that the Steam Deck does, you could have the uh, Pornhub intro sound and everything, which I, a lot I, of people I, I, listen I want, some, <laughs> I want. I want someone just to replace it with like the spinning Bill Nye head from Bill Nye the Science Guy going, Bill, 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 yeah. Bill. Uh, and uh, if only, you know, uh, Plymouth were that easy, uh, distro maintainers out there, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe consider making that um, easier process to customize Plymouth. But uh, yeah, it is, this is effectively, uh, it was the beta update, but they've now brought that into stable as well and rolled up all the previous betas into the stable client. So if you... Um, if you're running the betas right now, you have the same as everyone else. So... It, one thing to keep in mind, um, the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi bug is back on the stable version, uh, and disabling Wi-Fi power from the developer menu still solves it. So, Valve, fuck's sake, come on. I, <laughs> this I has been an question. issue since the start. <laughs> I have a question for you, Pedro. What have you changed the startup video to? I have not. <laughs> what are you going to change it to? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'll have a look through it now that it's official. Probably a lot more people are going to start creating their own. I'll have to look for an interesting one. I For it's the been- Pyboy DMG, I put the PlayStation one. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you should put like the Windows XP like, dun, 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 oh, no. on there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how much does it add to the boot time? Uh, not a lot, unless you make the video longer. Okay. I don't. Yep. <laughs> I thought you would benchmark it. <laughs> you can, I guess, but it all depends on how big the video is that you're putting there. <laughs> how, how many frames a second does your BIOS boot screen get, man? I don't know. I used to always think about that. Remember, like, um, not like AOSP would do that. CM mod. Sometimes you download them, and people would have like custom opening videos. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. well beyond the work. Like, you know, some, something that was clearly a video instead of like three D animated glyph blinking. I'm like. How much time does this add to the boot process? Like, come on, <laughs> give me a bunch of green OKs. My comfort zone. Rhythm yeah, games. Uh, yeah. Quaver. Uh, open source ones, even. They're on Steam. They're free to play. Ooh. You can you can try it out. Oh, yeah, okay. So this is, we got that yeah. covered. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they one thing I did notice, they don't actually include their GitHub page on the on the Steam description, which is a little unfortunate. You have to dig that link out of your website, which I did throw in the uh, I did throw it in the show notes for any of you who are interested. Uh, you can check all that out. Links. To all How does this even work? Well. What does that so, thing say? Marv or Mary? Marv, yeah. 
Mary. So I, I've so I've seen a bunch of uh, these arcade cabinets in arcades, and it's it's basically like Guitar Hero. It's very very stripped down Guitar Hero, where you have those buttons. You can have four to uh, four to six bucket buttons, and you just gotta like tap them while while the dots over them, and don't tap them when there's nothing under them. If you've played D- Beat Saber or DDR or anything like that, this is very much in that vein. Um, fully fully uh, community submitted levels. Uh, completely open source. You can. Uh, it is it is done entirely on mono. I checked to see if it was done in like Unity or something like that. But no, it is pure mono, done in C sharp. You gotta run it through mono if you want to run it in Linux, although it does natively run. So yeah, uh this is always cool. I'll, I always like to see open source games on Steam. You don't even have to pay for this one. Uh I guess the dev- developers just like paid the hundred bucks out of pocket and they're Free like, to play oh, here, yeah, yeah. yeah. Play, play our game. Do the thing like some of the other ones do, which is you have like a DLC option that gives you access to I don't know, official artwork or whatnot that you actually pay money for. They, they don't even have this one, <laughs> that, that and this. It's just yeah. it's just the game. So. Indeed. Now, before we get done with these steamy bits and going into the news, we need to talk about... <laughs> do it again, I dare you. <laughs> I just want to see if you do it again. Um, so, we, Linux and Rust... <laughs> not not what's not, about not to be the, the programming language. language right yeah <laughs> something uh we're, we're caveman penis rust so <laughs> yes linux and that sorted history you know it didn't work on linux and we got a linux build and linux build went away people are like yo now that we got the proton why can't we play rust and face is like eac bro we can't do anything about that there's been an update eac and proton even got a mention it's own little segment in the latest lumberjack update for Rust, which they talk about, uh, turns out that Face Punch Studios is not able to add EAC to Proton for a good reason, though. Oh, uh-huh. yes, yes. Face, bu- do, face Punch. Do tell. Um, <laughs> face Punch. They are worried about the little startup Epic not having the resources to support yet another game using EAC. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. now, here's the thing, though. So, you know, uh, enabling Proton support would mean we're asking EAC team to provide support for a whole other platform, which we fear, see, they're being the response ones here, mm-hmm. we fear would reduce their ability to support Windows, our main platform. We don't know whether we should enable one platform at the disadvantage of another. So, all of you mm-hmm. naysayers, all of you motherfuckers out there trying to throw face punch under the bus saying things like, oh man, they think their customers are just a bunch of mindless glue stick munching troglodytes no no face punch cares okay they're trying to save eac and that responsibility they're they're stepping up being responsible gentlemen we shouldn't be throwing them under the bus this you know i I, I think I, i i couldn't be any more disappointed in face punch at this point but here we are yeah, this this article is just so hilariously wrong in many it's, it's many ways. Throwing, literally throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. I, so so th- th- there, there's a there's a couple points in this in this post that I want to bring up that mm-hmm. is, that are just hilarious to me. Number okay. one, the fact that all apparently th- there wasn't a lot of cheaters on Linux that were, were were cheating on on Rust, but they definitely felt safer there. We have a lot of hard data on that. They think, oh, yeah. oh if 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 we enable, if, if, if we <laughs> enable, if not only is this undue burden for the poor, poor small company that is Epic Game and their easy anti-cheat service, um, if they enable EAC and then it stops working, people will have gone out of their way and spent three hundred and forty dollars on a Steam Deck to play Rust and only Rust, and then it'll just be hot garbage. It'll be a useless piece of hardware they spent hundreds of dollars on man Lin- linux support is hard for EAC. just ask fat shark it can't be done <laughs> i want you it to can't hear be me done out, at though. all <laughs> i want you to hear me out imagine see we, we they gotta th- go through some coping steps man because you gotta remember for gary valve writes his paychecks so mm. you know it's kind of a weird feel riding this up you know with gary's mod and all that and doing all this fun stuff well, th- th- this is and- this is alistair this isn't gary talking now but there's right. definitely some. There's definitely like some Kermit the Frog um, do we know? Happening. Do we know if Alistair yeah. is not just uh, face yeah. punch? Let's replace <laughs> yeah. this with face punch, and and effectively watching your sugar daddy and like being publicly coming out like this Linux thing's dumb. Bunch of nerds brought it, which you know what? 
bunch of nerds do run it. That's and just, fair. you know, having fun on the internet, like Gary has himself, just trolling the fuck out of people, which, you know, good job. You get people to bite all the time. Now, having that mentality, then watching effectively your employer, Valve, take that first swing with Linux with the steam machines going, uh, like, oh no, then they forgot about it. They did the Valve thing, forgot to do existing. Like, that's fine. <laughs> then 2022 rolls around. And they get a hit with it. And it's running that operating system that you apparently hate with a passion that all the hackers use. And it's so horrible <laughs> that Valve's like, let's build a hardware product around it. Cheating on Linux, yes. Uh, because, you know, uh, all the pre-baked cheats that exist for now, Linux, Pedro, unlike the EXEs. Pedro, like in all seriousness, I will say, if you're doing something that's <laughs> going to involve like exposing scripting and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yes. If you're doing any kind of yeah. me memory manipulation stuff like Cheat Engine, yes, that works or on Linux. If, or if you are <laughs> deploying a botnet, absolutely you want to deploy that on Windows, on Linux. Running it on Windows is going to be a pain in the ass. But yeah, you want Windows to be the client machines for that because those are the easiest ones to hijack. Go figure. Uh, but yeah, no, it... <laughs> There are arguments to be made that, yes, Linux makes it easier to do certain things, but the barrier of entry for cheating on Linux is stupidly more uh, or stupidly higher than it is on uh, Windows, because on Windows, you just download the prepackaged exe.ru.zip and away you go. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you see, you see, you see on, 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 on Linux, you, you have like a custom kernel that enables you to cheat. Like, ah, more yes. times. Hello, Tim Sweeney. <laughs> hey man, don't you know that there's a hidden binary inside of every kernel? Yeah. That reports all your, your usage directly to mm -hmm. Linus Torvalds because he fucking cares. He, he's just sitting there in front of his computer, scrolling through your fucking access logs going, yes, yes. This is what I want to spend my time doing and not free diving. Know. I mean, I don't even like having to talk about this stuff, especially when it comes to Rust. You know, here's the thing, though. Rust is still a popular game. I creeped on it, looked in the uh, Steam chart. I think like 140,000 active players daily. Yeah. I, so, but I, I, think, I think the people who are playing Rust are like just playing Rust. Yeah, but there's sure. a fuckload yeah. of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, good on that. I, like, all this can be avoided and like, Instead just of the fanfic up. bullshit and like just, tip, tip, trying to get through this fucking sentence, um, you can just come out and go, Fuck Linux. We all, that's it. That's it. Everybody's good with that. Everybody continues on about their fucking business. We don't no, say things like I, like this. I I assume this is either a troll or you genuinely believe that the people who buy software from you are fucking morons. I mean, probably. Wouldn't put it past them, yeah. <laughs> right. Which then again, you know, the Windows users are reading that and going, "Yep, that that checks." That makes yep, sense. Yep. That, that that confirms all of my pre-existing beliefs. Yep. That Linux I'm not going to I'm not going to question that mm -hmm. at all. 100%. All right. I look well, forward to someone actually taking that and using that as an excuse for certain games not coming to Linux. Indeed. Uh, again, this is, this, is, this is all flipped on its head. But I was like, Steam Deck. Like, but let it, Steam Deck. Yeah, but, we, 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 we've made a drop-in EAC library for you that right? we're actively working on. Literally, Epic. you put it in the right place in the depot. That's it. That's all you fucking got to do. Well, uh, no, you, you got to tick a box on a website, too. It's, yeah. it's not you, like you have any to go to the AAA titles have like went out of their way to make sure Valve got advanced copies to test to make sure it worked no. on their Apex. Spider-Man. Seriously, God Rogue War, Squadron but... and Apex. EA put their two like their two biggest uh multiplayer games that aren't uh Battlefield. Uh, they just put the files there and you can play them on Linux. Whatever. You you're just you're, you're just you're just a <laughs> Linux fanboy. This e this Steam Deck thing's a fad. This Linux thing's it'll, it'll, it'll blow over. Trust me, I'm gear. It's 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 only for servers. <laughs> Speaking speaking of servers, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about a video card that is destined to only ever run in servers. Yeah. But for now, you can buy a desktop version of it. We're talking about the ARC numbers coming up next. You'll have to pardon my particular choppiness this evening, at least as far as the video is concerned. There's nothing you can do about my uh now inherently um video viewers pause this shit put it on 240p i want to see what it looks like he's part uh, he's it probably man, looks exactly the same <laughs> but yeah no uh it's the news they're coming up but before we do we have to take a moment to thank all of you uh who decided to support us jordan take it away yeah yeah you know uh 
deblurrifying well, Pedro, jarring, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> deblurrifying Pedro in post production takes a lot of video processing power. We're going to need a brand new Arc GPU, and if we want to afford it, we're going to need your help. Head on over to Patreon.com/slash Linux Gamecast. Sign up. You get some cool stuff by signing up, like access to our Discord channel, which you can also get by subbing to us here on Twitch, Twitch.tv/slash Linux Gamecast. You got to link your accounts, and if you can't get into our Discord, you got to go yell at Patreon, Discord, or Twitch because they are the people at fault. We do not control the OAuth authentication. Unfortunately, we can do very little about it. You got to you know take how it, it up. Is. With you them. know how it is, though, man. It's like closest available target, right? Pretty much. They'll, they'll, they'll listen to me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Get other cool stuff like access to our show notes. You can uh, RSVP to game streams. Uh, we're, I guess next week on Thursday, we're taking a crack at the Back for Blood DLC that, now that we're finished the main campaign. Right. Uh, I want to think everybody's like showed up. Uh, Joe, come and hang yeah. out with us. Uh, Dan- Dancing Joe. Yeah, yeah, little did he know then, like, because we, it wasn't as bad as like the Trine series. We're like, wait, what? That's the end. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was like, man, this level is brutal. Oh, that's just because there's only one mission, so they got to make <sighs> us work for it, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, they've expecting been expecting us to be playing this game semi regularly. <laughs> Jokes on them. Mm-hmm. But if you want to check out the DLC with us, RSVP, Ven does Track Mania on Tuesdays and Fridays. So uh, if you join in on Friday, you might win a free game. There's po- three free points. games. Three free you games. You can win anything from a nature documentary to AAA titles because it's all the humble keys I haven't redeemed. <laughs> Damn nature, you scary. Uh, what else we got? We got uh, we got a store. We got store.linuxgamecast.com. You got to buy some LGC merch and dice. Cover your body in some t-shirts or stickers. I wonder if I can do dice yet. What, oh, that what, would, what, that, what do you think would happen if you rolled a Pedro? <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a critical failure, obviously. Yes, please. I want a D20 even if, with my face on it. It e- could be the number one. I don't care. No, no, I no, just no, want to no. have that. No, it's, it's it's a D20. The 20 is a Pedro face, but if you roll the Pedro face, you still get a critical failure because that's how these dice work. Um, I, don't, I don't know. We, we, we're, we're, we're coming up with merch ideas. Maybe, maybe if we get some good T-Fury things out of Jackbox, we can put them up on the store there as well. We got coffee cups. We got stickers. Buy them. Cover yourself in LGC apparel. Confuse your friends. Fascinate your enemies. All that good stuff. We got Wish Zones as well. If you head on over to LinuxGameCast.com, mouse over the support button. You too can help us expand our collections of crap. I have one. Pedro has one. Ven has one. Jill has one. I yeah. Ven Ven or Pedro needs arms. He needs many many yes. monitor arms and it, blinky it's keyboards. The one arm with the split for these two monitors. And if you want to buy me those, you got to do it quickly because I'm going to buy those uh, tomorrow. You can probably. buy Pedro a <laughs> Xiaomi electric scooter and just watch him accelerate into a light post. I just yes. yeah. Speaking <laughs> speaking of processor upgrades, speaking of chair upgrades, speaking of dice, you can buy me some crap if you want to help me build a giant back. You can help me b- with by buying some lad pull down accessories that I really just need to pull the trigger on because I have not been using my lad pull down at all because I need to buy them. Ven needs green motherboards. He needs green RAM. He needs green. I CPUs. need the hipster RAM. Yeah, you need you need if if, if it's anything other this than this is green, never in stock. This good. is such bullshit. Nobody except me wants this fucking processor. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's why it is nine hundred and twenty-eight dollars. <laughs> oh man! Ladies and gentlemen, we do thank you for your support. We try to throw in a bunch of bonus sodas and extra things oh. uh, for. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Right. I'm, I'm wrapping around to it. Up to and including, uh, we got bonus feeds. If you like the live experience, but you've never been able to catch it, you're not available for. The, we got that for you in podcast format and the video as well. We do a bonus show, wizards and shit. We're spoiling the hell out of uh, House of the Dragon. And um, rings of power, rings of power, man. Uh, who is Sauron? What will he do next? It's always I'm fun. I'm pretty sure That's Galadriel insane. is secretly Sauron, probably. Probably, it's either that <laughs> or he's the boat. Um, yeah. pre pre super chosen, it's Nori the halfling. Hey, man, <laughs> hey, man. Uh, and early access to a bunch of things that we like to put out. So, we do need to thank Basil for his yes. 33 month resub. And That's a long time. <laughs> That's almost three years since I didn't get it last week. You know I'd pick this up for the studio, therefore you end up on the fuck wall, and I found them with the markers, man. There you are, man. Hey, right <laughs> you know next it. to Carl. <laughs> so, I mean, no one gets something and be like, is a really cool guy under it, dot com or something. <laughs> no one's weaponized this in all the years. Yeah, no, right. that, the names have been there, and they've been, you know, fairly sensible. <laughs> 
<laughs> because yeah. if anybody else was dumb enough to do that and send us the Amazon thing, I'm like, Pedro is an absolute tool. Hang on, let me read this though. What did they write in? Um, Pedro is an absolute tool. <laughs> oh, <shot. laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, you let us do this just the way we want to do it, which is probably the wrong way, but we have a good time doing it and we hope you enjoy yes. it. Now, <laughs> Intel Arc 770 and uh, A750 reviews have been out. And here's yeah. one thing, Jordan. Mm-hmm. I want to ask both of you, actually. Did either of you have a oh, Le Shock moment? And you're like, that's about what I thought. More or less, yeah. So th- yeah. this uh, this 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 all comes from PC World. They have their pretty comprehensive review. It, it is actually fairly comprehensive. They do a bunch of tests, do a bunch of benchmarks, compares it, compare it. Um, and uh, so let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the A770 and the A750. They're going to need resizable bar. I w- so that w- that was a bit of a surprise. I was actually looking at what an A350 costs in Canada a couple weeks ago, and I noticed that. Even on the basic, I need a video out, any video out model, you're going to need resizable bar. And if you don't have it, you're going to take a substantial performance hit, as uh, oh, we've yeah. seen. The- uh, <laughs> but bench- benchmark-wise... It's it's looking not as awful as we thought. It's not all doom and gloom. Uh, mm-hmm. We're seeing that it can, at least uh, with DirectX 12 and Vulkan, it can definitely hold its own against the 3060 uh, and the uh, 6600, um, the RX 6600. Um, definitely resizable bar helps a lot. Definitely using XESS helps a lot on the supported games. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, th- things that are using uh, DirectX 11, not so great. Um, but here's the thing on on Linux, and but I guess here's the other thing about these numbers that we gotta we gotta keep in mind. These are all bullshit because these are for the Windows drivers. The Linux driver is a completely different animal. There is no shared code between the Linux driver and the Windows driver. And really, all we care about is that Vulkan performance, which does seem to be pretty good. Uh, they tested uh, Strange Brigade, which is their one Vulkan title. And um, it seemed it does pretty well uh, compared to yeah. uh, compared to the 3060. So if the if the Linux drivers can hold up that level of performance, then you know you have actually a pretty compelling card. Mm-hmm. And you know we and yeah uh, and you know for direct X performance, all our direct X performance is Vulcan anyways. So shit. Yes, I do <laughs> want to see how that shakes down. Um, having a 3060. The only thing is. I'd even have to look into it because I don't know if the X399 chipset I have in this box, uh, I think there's a beta BIOS that will give me the resizable bar. I don't know. 350, it's almost within the curiosity. Mm-hmm. Almost, and I say that like, eh, maybe. But if you're like me, you've been on Team Green so long, and despite what the internet claims, if you know what the hell you're doing, NVIDIA drivers have been no fuss for 20 plus years. You just install them, you're done. I mean, incredibly boring. You never get to go into the adventure of like getting the uh, 5000 series set up with AMD. Of, like, the only annoying bit is actually installing them if you're not getting them from the repo. <laughs> having no, to how is that kill annoying? the running. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> having to kill the running X session to, for the sake of running. Pedro, what if I built you an Incurses interface with an X button that you could pretend to click on a couple of times? It's not about running it from the CLI. It's the need to kill the running graphical session in order to install a driver. Uh-huh. No, that that needs to change. It's it's <laughs> it's not great. That that's but that said, like pe- people, I I do agree with them. People like really overblow the pain of the NVIDIA blob drivers. Yeah, they're, they're, that they're, they're, that is the one issue. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Like I use run file period on like whatever I'm on. You, you run into like situations. I forget who it was. I was playing around with the kernel 6.0 earlier this week. I think they were on pop OS and I'm like, it will build the very latest one. NVIDIA driver will build against 6.0. And they were like one version behind. They're like, up, oh, I, I host the box time to score. I'm like, what? No, no, <laughs> don't, don't wipe the box. That's not how you should do that. Now, a couple of things, a couple of things. Um, because, I'm excited into what Jordan said. Vulcan performance, that's what we want to see. Because for all we know, that the that 770 limited edition, by the way, is not limited. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Intel had to clarify that what they meant by limited edition is that's what we're calling our founder's edition. Because we just wanted to confuse people because we're Intel. Here's some brown lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, here's the thing, though. This could be like the budget like Vulcan gaming card for like 1080p 1440p gaming for linux users for that price it could very well be to go to it's like okay i just need something that plays games has pretty good encode yeah 
and and you know sp- speak, speaking of uh, driver problems this is all like supported by the operating system theoretically like mm-hmm. uh, Fedora mm-hmm. 37 is coming out in a couple weeks there's probably going to ne- be a new version of Ubuntu Arch uh, we'll, they'll, f- they'll figure it out it, there's an AUR for it <laughs> it'll probably be available very very quickly but yeah no the 770 yeah. trades blows with the 3060 and mm-hmm. the uh, 6600 XT the 750 is kind of more in line with the um, non XT version of the 6600 okay let's be perfectly clear the only card they released was the 770 limited edition. Yeah. Every, everything uh, else is like yeah yeah whatever fuck off the, um, they said the uh, 750s uh, for the reviewers as well but yeah if you don't really need the AV1 encoding uh, the AMD cards are cheaper. The 6600 XT is, it goes for like 300 pounds here now. So that's actually a pretty good buy. Well, I mean, and, we got to look at it like this, like a 3060 right now. I went and looked it up because Pedro was like, you know, as long as NVIDIA keeps the 3060 prices mm-hmm. in contention. And I'm like, okay, what, what can you go to Newegg and buy 3060 for? 369.48. Yeah, the, the cheapest box. one here was uh, 380, the brand new Versus one. Versus <laughs> 349 for the 770 limited edition. So the only thing I can think about that, you know, because you got like that $40 price difference. Who's to say this upcoming Wednesday NVIDIA just doesn't drop 40 bucks off the 3060 because it's last generation anyway. Like, they want to get rid of them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. In, in video, they doesn't should seem to be in. They still haven't to this point. They still haven't, but they absolutely yeah. should. <laughs> Nvidia doesn't strike me as a type of company that will lower prices once they have been raised. Uh, I see, see the forty eighty and forty ninety. So uh, see the th- thirty sixty over here. Uh, the um, MSRP over okay, here. You in the say UK that the original was, MSRP at the thirty sixty was uh, three ninety nine. That's that, that's true. That's that not what you were thirty sixty Ti. <laughs> Okay, then less than three fifty. Yes, <laughs> it was three uh, three hundred and fifty pounds. That was the MSRP, well, and the cheapest one pounds. you can buy now is three hundred and eighty in so, pounds. Yeah, yes, in pounds. <laughs> okay. I, so here, 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 here's the thing, though. Uh, now, now that we have these numbers, now that we're getting people having these cards in their hands, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think it's all doom and gloom for for Intel. And I think maybe maybe this is a positive signal to the business wonks at Intel yes. to not kill <laughs> their graphics cards offering. Because I kind of want to see what Battle Mage and Celestial can do. Like like the the drivers were always going to be shit. And and uh, Nvidia and AMD have had literal decades to get mm-hmm. all the software specific fixes in their drivers and getting every single old game working is a next to impossible task. So like yeah, I I, I really really Which is hope. going to be yeah, it's, it's not going to be as big an issue on Linux because everything or at least D- DirectX 9, DirectX 10, 11, and 12 it's, it's, are running through DXVK Vulcan. and VKD right. 3D. So it's all Vulkan right. all the time. <laughs> but ha- having, having that player three, having ha- now that we have good results from Intel, now that they have the driver issue sorted, now that they actually have a body of experience and can go forward and start putting out better and better products, I really hope they keep on the course. I really hope that this is the positive sign that their marketing or that their business people needed to say, yeah, this is actually a worthwhile continued investment. There was some there was some skepticism at, at the beginning and it was very, very healthy. And but well, we're, even we're with this results. launch and every reviewer has went through, at least on the Windows side and says, yes, the drivers are still an absolute dumpster fire. Like this yeah. thing has problems not cutting on <laughs> monitors sometimes corruption uh, yeah. because it creates a full desktop overlay and it starts to show artifacts and since and- i know somebody's <laughs> going to ring it up and i'm like what about the ray tracing performance well the rasterization performance of the even the 770 is so fucking low like a 3060 you don't cut on ray tracing anyway <laughs> it doesn't make any damn sense it's like yeah i want this to run slower uh no well if you gotta you gotta play quick two rtx man then dude you gotta- um i don't know i mean i want this is like what we opened this segment was about what you would expect it. I mean, Intel kind of has something that kind of competes with the low end, uh, lower end of last generation NVIDIA's cards while using significantly more power, which makes you wonder, like, I think the original performance they were aiming for was probably like 3070, like they originally mm-hmm. were talking about. When the first uh, rumor started coming out that that was the number that was brandied about. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Battle Mage, except I, the me and me just wants one to play around with for no practical reason. I don't have an excuse to so shut up Strider. I don't have the, um, 
workload for it other than I just want to play with it. Yeah, I want to play with the AV1 encoding, but then again, what are we going to do? We're going to wait until November 3rd? 3rd. Yeah, 3rd. Mm-hmm. That's when the AMD announcement said. Yeah. That's that's when we, we we learn the true true. That's- like, yeah, unless like Intel just calls me up like, here's your art card. I'm like, okay, fine, but I still might buy an AMD one. Um, yeah, nobody's buying anything. I don't see a lot of movement on this outside of like reviewers talking about it. But hey, you know, a lot can happen in one month, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, like a new NVIDIA driver. That's nope. not a blob driver. <laughs> an open source NVIDIA nope. driver for Vulcan it, of it, all things. <laughs> NVIDIA don't roll that way. Wait. No, N- it, NVIDIA doesn't have to, man. Why? Because they NVIDIA released the K-Muns. <laughs> NVIDIA got NVK. <laughs> Introducing NVK. They've been hard at work in this. You know, traditionally, Nuvo drivers were something uh, you just kind of hope work you know, long enough to install the binary blob. You know, it, it was the uh, Internet Explorer of installing Chrome or Firefox, man. But you got to keep in mind, like the Nuvo drivers, they were reverse engineered. And it was kind of amazing at all that they could manage just getting you enough screen to get up and going. Now, with the landscape over the years, it's changed. It has, man. The introduction of the GSP firmware, the open source kernel drivers, and the headers for the 3D compute stuff all in the NVIDIA side have made a few things possible. And... The fine miscreants over at Calabra. Like, hey, you know, it's probably a good time to give the Nuvo driver stack uh, a little bit of a rewrite. And you know what? This is what we have. NVK. Now, it's early days. How early, Vad? Oh, let me tell you. Don't bother reporting bugs yet. Mm-mm. Now, they talk about progress in this article. And they say, hey, we're about 20% there. There being something that kind of sort of works. And if you want to play the uh, home the game, Vulcan conformance test suite. That's that's their uh, basis. Yeah, uh-huh. the, uh, that's actually like ninety percent uh, of the way done. It's just that uh, it's ninety percent because they don't really count more than half of it because they're image types that aren't really supported by anyone. And, so uh, yes, they're uh, part codex of as well. So if you want to like play around with a home branch, <laughs> you can do that, man. Uh, they got there's a link to the GitHub. All this is going to be in the show notes now. They thing that kind of caught me off guard, though, know, was like, hey, we still got to deal with OpenGL. Mm-hmm. This is the thing. And I'm like, you know what? We could do a rewrite of Gallium, and they go on at length, a little bit at length, to say that's not as bad as it sounds, believe it or not. Or they could use Zinc for OpenGL. And Jordan, Zinc's kind of an interesting thing, isn't it? Yeah, Zinc is the OpenGL on uh, Vulkan layer. And much, much like uh, DXVK and D9VK and vkd3d it seems to be making pretty good progress they are supporting the vast majority of the opengl profiles and yeah it's it's definitely a way to move forward if they can't really refactor uh the gallium stuff but uh jason did say that uh, part of this uh this code work is trying to make things a little bit more generic so that like other other drivers can pull in these changes as well and you really got to wonder like Given given how uh, how close Valve has been working with the AMD driver team, is Valve going to throw some cash at this? Maybe get some NVIDIA ACO going in the not too distant future. Mm. What makes you think they weren't the ones who went to Calabra and said, "Can you make this, but for NVIDIA too?" <laughs> may, it may, may be right. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're they're mentioning there's still a ton of work to be done at the user space level. There's also a kernel UAPIs that need to be done. Uh, the Mesa UAPIs are not, or the uh, the Nouveau ones are not going to cut it as well. And uh, they're they're saying that for now it's going to be Turing plus. Um, mm-hmm. Jason's going to be looking at getting a loveless GPU to get this up and running. And there is a patch set that takes this back as far as Pascal, but things are still a little iffy. And it's up in the air. Kepler, to- not Pascal. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm going to say like both of those. Like, don't expect this shit to. Uh, yeah, it's not going to work on your Nvidia Ion. No, yeah, no, uh, that that that's me. That that's a me thing. I very much want the for me uh, support for Vulcan because Nvidia decided nah, nah, we we're yeah, only I, going I, to support Vulcan on Maxwell and higher. I, so. I, I would like some uh, Pascal support because, like, I'm I'm looking at the list of supported devices on the Nvidia driver, and I'm mm-hmm. like, man, the 1080 Ti is about due to get bumped to the long live branch. It is. It's a it's a retro card at this point. It's like it, two gener- three generations. Yeah. Old. So uh, yeah. Ha- maybe having some. Some, uh, open source drivers that can do the Vulcans in the OpenGL. That would be very, very nice to not have to throw out that thousand dollar fucking card. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. No, I want that for me support. Bring it back to the three forty uh, of the proprietary legacy series. That that 
please. <laughs> I just like the idea of this work being done to have a mostly working system, you know, fast forward five years, seven years in the future uh, with the Linux out of the box with NVIDIA or AMD or Intel. There's no, hey, yeah. here's a catch or anything along those lines. And I, I'm just excited about this. This is glad. Also, uh, beautiful Calabora, Calabra people. Thank you for sending me emails when you do cool shit like this. So I know to like <laughs> talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. That keep doing that. Indeed. So gentlemen, Pedro, you're going to run a marathon boomer shooter. <laughs> well, uh, it's not exactly marathon, but it is running on the, uh, I know it's not ale phone. It's all of one, but I want to call it ale phone engine. Uh, it's so the Osis X, uh, version 1.0. It's out. Uh, you can play it. It is, uh, well, getting it to compile on getting the engine um, ale phone uh, compiled on Nobara 36, it took a, a lot more finagling than the just really? running yeah dot forward slash configure would imply because the configure was fine, but then it would just spit out compilation errors left and right. So really, really, I, I yeah. ran autogen.sh make install and it ran perfectly fine the first time around. That's bizarre. Okay, uh, I followed no, no the Barra. suggestion. Uh, yeah, I, I followed the suggestion on their GitHub and ran dot configure, and it uh, failed. So yeah, but yeah, I, I just eventually, uh, yeah, eventually I got it working, and the um, yeah, it, it, it is very much a marathon engine with the sprites and everything else made to look that much nicer. And yes, it does look very good, but by default, uh, it. Uh, auto centers the uh, view on screen like unlike what that video is showing by default it keeps wiggling your uh, view up and down to try and center it always that's bad please stop doing that uh, now um, it's not as impressive as if say you were comparing this to Salako, what that game is doing with GZ Doom, but it it's Marathon. It's, <laughs> I have I actually hadn't heard of Marathon uh Marathon in a long time since uh they released what was it Marathon 2 on the uh Xbox Kisbla, the XBLA. Yeah, that's uh it's been a while. <laughs> okay, okay. The subtitles did catch that as Kiss Blah too, so I didn't. Really that. <laughs> yeah, I, I I gave this a run as well, and yeah, you I know what? Else... It caught your rendition as Kissable. Ah, <laughs> Kiss Blah, Kapla. Uh, no, I I uh, I pulled this from Git. I ran the compile. It ran the the build ran within like two minutes. It was fine. I didn't run into any issues on Fedora thirty five. Don't use Nobara, folks. I guess. Uh, but yeah, uh, like Pedro said, it does have that drifting to the center thing and i couldn't find mm -hmm. a way to turn that off it is a little annoying also the it's mouse sensitivity files yeah, yeah the mouse <laughs> sensitivity is super fucking high uh so uh i although i did i did actually try it and it did pick up and work with the uh, dualshock 4 controller i was curious Ooh. like, like it's SDL2. all right yeah, yeah sdl2 <laughs> so it just picked it up and worked out of the box yeah if you're looking for some more marathony stuff um definitely check this out how does it I, feel I, like boomer shooter it is. It is very much like late. I, I guess this is basically this is using the marathon infinite stuff. So I think I'm, it's I'm getting like uh, this is like looking at the architecture. Oh, okay. I was thinking like more like Duke Nukem. Uh, it it, it 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 feels a little build engineer. Yeah. yeah. A little bit, uh, far less detail in the, the environments. Everything else is a bit more blocky than what you'd got in build e Duke. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How does the uh, achievement system work? Don't know. <laughs> yeah, didn't play uh, long enough to unlock anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's using cross-platform achievements. Like, but, uh, like but how, do, how do I get my trophy? What about the uh, DLC? Uh, you, you gotta, you gotta get on Xbox Live Arcade for that. D is yeah. crossplay enabled? Yeah, sure. Why not? I, I guess we'll have to ask uh, a flibit to <laughs> do the Kiss Bra FNA port. <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, it's cr cross play over uh, IPX SPX. Yeah, IPX, it's fine. fuck yeah, man. <laughs> Go get some BNC cables. We'll make this happen. Yeah. Uh, but right. hey, uh, it's, it's not bad. Coming up next, uh, get ready for the authentic World War One experience for Throne Cheers at Isonzo. Oh. And we're back with the Chairquisition, where we take a game that runs on Linux, run it on a bunch of different Linuxes with a bunch of different hardware, and then we give you a hyper-scientific, historically accurate, simulationist chair rating. One chair means that it's garbage. Chipping simulationist. 
Yeah. <laughs> four chairs means that is the most accurate historical piece of media in the history of historical See, media. I, I, okay, those are accurate, but I don't know what the fuck they are. Uh, yeah. Um, right? Uh, staff weapons? Pole arms? <laughs> Jaffa Cree? <laughs> and, 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 anyways, this, this week we're taking a look at Izonzo by M2H and Black Mill Games done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 30 bucks US. What is it? Ferocious Alpine Warfare will test your tactical skills in this authentic World War I FPS battle among scenic peaks, rugged valleys, idyllic towns of northern Italy. The Great War on the Italian Front is brought to life and elevated to unexpected heights. We gotta thank uh, M2H and Black Mill for sending us some keys. I guess let's get into it. Pedro, how dead are you? Uh, very, very dead. Uh, but before we get to that, over here on Nobara 36 with the. Uh, uh, RX 6700 XT. I keep wanting to say RTX, but it's not. It's AMD. Uh, and the Ryzen 7 3700X. It uh, launches out of the box. Uh, the Furbs on medium, that's what it defaults to at 2560 by 1440, go anywhere between 60 and 130. Uh, the uh, If you lower the resolution down to 1080p, it actually does a very good job of maintaining 144 for the most part. So that's clearly what they test it on. Uh, on some maps, but that looks a little bit blurry if you're like in full screen on a 2K monitor. It looks a little bit blurry. And you kind of want that resolution and as big a screen as possible. But more on that later as well. Honestly, the game looks amazing. Uh, it's just unfortunate that if you stop to look at the uh, thing, you get deaded. But we'll get to that. Like the cliff maps, especially with the fort one specifically sticking out in my mind, you're approaching, if you're playing as one of the attackers, you're approaching like this massive fort on a hillside with a giant ass cliff down the side. It's like, yes, that looks amazing. Uh, the guns, uh, well, they don't sound very good, but they're, they're accurate. World War One guns didn't sound particularly powerful because they weren't. So yeah. As for the fun, well, did you like Tannenberg? Because if you did, this is an improved version of that, which manages to use more of my GPU uh, than RAM uh, this time around, because Tannenberg, boy, that game liked its RAM. <laughs> it liked it a lot. But, you know, all joking aside, it really does look amazing. Um, it was frustrating at first when I couldn't see any enemies and I just died out of the blue. I was going like, oh, this is so pretty. Dead. Okay, then I learned that looking at the pretty scenery is bad, and you should get accustomed to go prone immediately as soon as you, like, hear a shot whiz through your head. It's like, <laughs> yep, drop down onto the ground. Um, and get real acquainted with the butt of your gun and the iron sights, because that's what you're going to be looking at the whole time. It is a solid continuation of the uh, series. Uh, and if you've liked it up until now, you're going to like this one even more. I personally would very much like a peaceful exploration mode so I can actually look at the scenery and explore all the bits without immediately getting deaded as soon as my, you know, the the feathers on the cap of my soldier guy, they go slightly above cover and headshot. It's like, all right, okay. But still, a very nice game. Three chairs. <laughs> oh, man, I know what you're thinking, ladies and gentlemen. You're like, how does this game run on a first-gen Red Ripper? <laughs> Yep, I, I can hear it. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you. On the 1920X with a 3060, it manages to eke out about 70. You know, 70 plus, with, and that's with everything slammed on 11 at 1080p, because, hey, 3060 is 1080p card. That's why I got it. Graphically, what that's going to get you is, like, Skyrim-level graphics. And yeah, I mean, like, OG-level Skyrim. And that's a big step up, actually, compared to previous simulation shooters, which have been... Less than ideal to look at, I think we can all agree. Now, as far as the sounds, uh, the pews, they're going to go pew. That's it. There's nothing like really stands out, sticks you in the face. You control it with your keys and your gerbil. That's your controls. It probably works with a controller, but come on. I mean, who's really going to try that? Because no, that doesn't sound like fun. And speaking of the fun, there's a nice little tutorial video that does absolutely fucking all for teaching me about the game when you first start it up. I was thinking I messed something up. But nope, that's it. I talked to Jordan. Jordan's like, yeah, that video, I remember that. That was a good time. Jumped right in, died a lot. And that's what you do in these games because there's a small segment of the population that really enjoys this type of shit. And good on them, man. You know, you effectively are just feeding the meat grinder and the team that feeds the less, they're going to win. Played with Jordan a bit this afternoon. 
It's slightly less monotonous, uh, mainly because we were able to have a conversation while throwing bodies at the problem. We yeah, have that chat. I was down with that. And um, trying to find your teammate. That's full metal. Where's Waldo on that, man? Because like, it will pop up over their head if you look at them just right and you're directly in front of them. You can see them on the overhead map, but then you got to find it without getting killed to death. And, well, that's never going to happen. And, you know, you'd like to say, well, hey, uh, that couldn't possibly be fun. But, I mean, it's entertaining. This is well done. you got to look at this through the lens of what they were going for. And we've played these at, like, Verdun. Like, I get it. And, you know, the server's pretty full. There are three or four servers maxed out with 48 players and rolling down. Setting up a server, a private server, is a pain in the ass. Didn't like that. Getting in a group with your friends, also a pain in the ass. They need to work on that. Uh, I did find a glitchy hidey hole and murdered the bot swarms when they were spawning. And, um, yeah, there might be some really fun underlying mechanics and gameplay stuff going on that I have, I don't know about because they never bothered explaining it to me and that two-minute video that's like, here's our game. Have that, fucko. And I'm not going to take the time to uncover it. But Meat Grinder Simulator 2022, it works. I mean, it's a functional product, and you know if this type of game is your gem. So, I mean, I'm going to give it two chairs for what it is. Jordan, you played with me. What are your thoughts? I did. Uh, on Fedora 35 64-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti launches out of the box. Uh, I had it running at medium. It holds well over 68 UHD and well over 200 frames a second at uh, 1080p. Controls are all the same as the other w WW1 games created by these guys. And yeah, like Pedro said, it's very pretty. Uh, there's a lot of work being made, uh, being put into the maps. There's minor detailing in the houses. All the cliff faces look unique. It is just a regular ass fuck box. Um, there is music in the menu. There's some very light music in the actual game proper, but most of the soundtrack is just European men screaming and bullets, but like not in the fun Rammstein way. Uh, anyways, fun wise, I was very lukewarm on Ta Tannenberg because I'm not a big fan of simulation in games. I like the power fantasy. I like being able to run around and be the doom guy or be low Wang or whatever and chop stuff up and like glory kill my way through a bunch of enemies that aren't real. Um, but, and you know, like it's technical predecessors or like it's predecessors. I saw leans heavily on trying to recreate every single little detail. And as far as the technical work goes, it is the best that these guys have cranked out. But if you asked me if I had fun playing this game, you get a resounding no. I'm not a fan of the crawl, crawl, die, rinse, repeat for an hour until the match is over gameplay loop. Uh, the combat feels like shit. The guns are all horribly inaccurate, and you can't take two steps without getting deaded by some dude you thought was on your team for a split second, which, you know, I guess is pretty much the authentic World War One experience. And I will say, trying to identify your team members fucking sucks in this game, because you have two teams. You got Italy and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Italy is in gray. Austro-Hungarian Empire is in slightly less gray-blue, and the icons for people on your team are the same color of blue as the Austro-Hungarians. So trying to figure out who's on your side, especially when you get penalized for shooting your own guys, really sucks because by the time you figure it out, you get murdered. Um, multiplayer does save it, as Ven said. Um, I, th I think like this probably works better if you have a server full of people and there's not bots because there's stuff you can do like call in artillery and gas and like bomb targets and all this stuff probably requires a lot more coordination than the little shitty commands you can issue to the bots if you can remember to do it when you're looking for that key and not get killed. So I don't know. This is clearly people's jam. People are super into it. And I think if you like this type of game, then it, this is certainly worth your 30 bucks. But if you're looking to maybe get into it, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure this is you'll probably have a better time playing this than, say, like Tannenberg or Verdun. But I don't know if it's going to sell you on the genre. You really need to be into that simulationism. I'm going to give it two chairs. Yeah, I don't think anyone will ch it'll change anyone's mind. Uh, but it is. It like I said, if this is a genre that you liked and you wanted more after Tenenberg, yeah, this is it. Do you this think is it's like a, when a new game comes out, it pisses off all the people playing Tenenberg? Like, what the fuck, man? You can't divide the community. So here, so here, here's the thing. About, here's the thing about this. I brought this up in in the in between segment, but I'll say it here. Uh, if you go to, it, there's like a in in the game menu. There's like a oh, would you like to change fronts? And they have 
Verdun and they have Tannenberg and they uh-huh. have Vaisonso. And yeah. it's like, oh, did they, did they bring the maps in here? No, it just clo- uh, if you click on Tannenberg or if you click on Verdun, it, it closes the game and then it tries to install <laughs> Verdun or Tannenberg. And if you don't have it, it's like, hey, you want to buy it? I think that's kind of a be fair. Tannenberg that did that too. If you picked the Verdun uh, scenario, yeah, it's yeah that's what about us. Like, yeah, yeah, no, it's, 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 fuck, it's fucking, it's fucking pointless. <laughs> don't do it. And um, uh, yeah. I, if it's your gem, you know these things are your gem. I try. I would really wish there was like a demo or something like that because you will know in like two minutes. I'm like, yeah, fuck this. Uh huh. Which is called a normal reaction, but <laughs> some people can power through that. And again, there's probably a ton of stuff in there that uh, I'm blissfully unaware of because there is zero time. Yeah, you got to unlock all of it. Well, even unlocking, um, like a legitimate tutorial, like this is what I'm mm. saying, because, you know, a series like this, you want to foster new players, and this game does nothing to take somebody from ground level, of like, hey, maybe I want to get into this. And it's like, well, have fun. All that person's going to do is get killed to death, you know, for two minutes and go, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> like, there's these things you need to work up to, and it's well-researched, too, because there's a history lesson behind every click. But... Uh, I don't know. And then, you know, all the mustard gas and no pretzels. I don't know how accurate that is. <laughs> Pretzel cannons, baby. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. All right. That'll do it. Coming up next. It's time to get nuts. You want to get nuts? All right. You are all lovely, lovely people. And yeah, you we decided. Just over this on a Subaru. Yeah. <laughs> You can be cars, you can be airships. I mean, um, what was it? Um, Second Life had a mode, but you could play as an airship. So that that's someone's can, can I Can I be a success in my father's eyes? You, you can. Can I be a mongoose airship? <laughs> I think you could skin them, yes. Listen, I don't, I don't okay, know how we are, official we that are not was, promoting but. inflating your mongooses. All right. <laughs> I, I mean, if, if 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 they're already dead and you're going to taxidermy them, turn them into like the the cat drone. But yes, you, uh, you chances are, <laughs> if you've created your own uh, dead pet drone, by all means, let us know. Let the internet throw know. it Everyone, into the ocean, please. <laughs> everyone's going to love that. But yeah, go to LinuxGameCast.com. Uh, hit the contact button. There's a form you got to fill with some caveats at the top. The caveats are important if you're trying to promote. Your game, don't include links. The spam golem will go mm, no. Nah. So there's a, a little caveat that's specifically dedicated to that. If you do want us to have a look at your game, though, please include three keys. That's all we ask. That that's three copies awesome. of something. There's an email address even encrypted on that page. That yeah, can, Re- yeah. Listen, re- <laughs> reading is hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stenography, man. It, it, <laughs> enco- encoded as a PNG. Oh no. <laughs> That uh, hypertext transfer protocol, yes. <laughs> so apparently, at some point in the last couple of weeks, we were talking about cashews. And I bon- mentioned cashews at the start of the news last week. What was it? Yeah. What, what was it about? What, what were it we was about, about the rhyming uh, of uh, things with news. Uh, you mentioned something else that I can't remember what it was. Why would you choose to rhyme news with cashews? I mean, cashews are venomous like horses, but. Apparently, yeah, uh, f- according to uh, Von Doom, fun fact, cashews are poisonous. If not cleaned properly and cooked, eating them would be similar to eating poison ivy. I mean, have you seen poison ivy? I mean, I yeah, it out. looks delicious. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sure Harley Quinn eats a lot I of cashews. I play the Batman games, yeah. yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Yeah, Harley Quinn's all over that. Uh, but yeah, the... Uh, I, I, I don't know, Patriot, what's, what's your preferred nut? Or cashews, yeah. Cashews. Uh, uh, you're, you're, you're cashews cashew very much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Then, then, do, do you do you partake in in the nuts? I'll fuck some nuts up, baby. I'll just gobble all the nuts. Uh, uh, you've seen me in my eat an entire bag of almonds on stream. That ended See, the, poorly. So, this, <laughs> uh, like the cashews are the ones with like the little fucked up shells that you gotta dig out, right? Mm-hmm. No, those are no, pistachios. Those are pistachios. pistachios yeah. That's what I was thinking about. Keep me the fuck away from pistachios. No, oh, it, dude, yeah, pistachios are great. Now, will, here's the I'll, thing: they cannot. They, they need I to be in the shell. Yeah. <laughs> they have to be in the shell because it's like sunflower seeds, man. I, I was like, I thought I was going to cut the middleman out of sunflower seeds one day. I had that brilliant idea when I was like, oh look, pre-shelled stuff. Not the same experience, man. Uh, it's, it's yeah. It's like it, you uh, need it's like, like the the Doritos. The shell it's like the Doritos. You need, you need the cheese dust on your fingers. <laughs> 
Yeah, you, you the need experience. the shell covered in salt and just run around in you your mouth as you're trying to dig the bait out. Like for some reason, they just sold like bags of Dorito dust. <laughs> Dude, I was say, man. I, that's probably listen, like a topping for I am, something. I am, yeah. I am very deep into calorie deficit. I would <laughs> snort that shit up. <laughs> Moral of the story, man. Uh, yeah, if your significant other starts leaving like uh, improperly cooked and cleaned cashews <laughs> around the house, you might want to hire an attorney. There you go. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, up next, we got we got something from uh, Taito. He's talking about the Steam Dock, and he says it's ninety dollars. Get the fuck out! Third party top tier equipment is you know like what? fifty dollars. Fair. Yeah, <laughs> Valve needs to compete better than that. They don't really. They're they're not in the business of selling peripherals. Uh, and they said I, it was actually in the uh, post that we covered earlier in the Steam segment uh, that all of the enhancements they made in the beta for the Steam dock apply to like any dock. So all the scaling resolution controls, they've tested it with a bunch and they're accepting bug reports for docks that don't work. So, I mean, yeah, you can you can definitely get a cheaper dock. I think the what they have is like, oh, if you want to like stand it up and make it look nice. Yeah, it has a nice stand that it actually will deliver 120 hertz on a 2K screen and a UHD screen at the same time. I wonder so, what games the Steam Deck could actually run at like 2K 120 at like a, a I did, uh, something like Pong. hipster pixely. Yeah. <laughs> Doom, Doom Two. <laughs> So I'm unfamiliar with like dock technology. I do know that the Steam Deck has DisplayPort, HDMI, and that is, that is nice. Ethernet, normally you have to pay a couple extra you have USB to pay ports. for uh, for uh, DisplayPort and HDMI. So the fact that they're both included is nice. Also, we need more that now. Here's the here's the question I have though. I mean, and does uh, do do we have to bring firmware into this relationship? <laughs> usually, usually no. They're all USB C things. Uh, Valve said that if there was ever a need to update the firmware, you could do it okay, from so the Steam does Deck. Have firmware. All right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it oh, is a USB C well, controller, so yeah. <laughs> so I, I mean, you can do like the FW up D thing. Like I'm sure uh, Val, Val, Valve is using uh, the firmware project, right? They're not rolling. My one like gripe that. with the, this particular uh, coming from Taito is top tier uh, third party equipment is fifty dollars. That's disingenuous at best because uh, the I can't remember the uh, name of the dude that was making like the really nice. That looked like the official. Wait a um, minute, are you Steam about to like, There was this one guy making hand making boutique custom <laughs> deck docks. I, yeah. I was going to mention, you know, the third party uh, alternative that Who's is. That? <laughs> that's the thing. I can't remember the name. Damn it. J Sox. J Sox. J S A U X. Yes. J Sox. Socks. 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 But yeah, uh, that particular uh company person whatever uh they're making top tier third party equipment for 120 bucks so yeah i think 90 is perfectly acceptable yeah it's it's a little high i i wouldn't say it's completely unreasonable <laughs> but i i wouldn't pay that much for a usb dock yeah no uh second hand if you're looking at like used ones the dell wd15s are very cheap on the secondhand market right now. Is it going to be a, a repeat of that situation when I was in the consignment shop and I saw like one of the uh, Steam <laughs> streamer things for ninety nine cents? Steam and, links. Yeah, and I, I just looked at it. And I was like, eh. <laughs> kept going. I mean, it's an app now. You can run on your. Can you by. use the dock with anything other than a deck? Uh, no, yes. it's a, it's a, it's just a Type C dock, right? Like, yeah. well, I mean, can I, can I fit my Aya Nano or my uh, GDP GPD? Not win, win, win two, yeah. Maybe if it yeah. is a 45 watt power delivery, yeah. <laughs> oh, and we should point out that the Steam Dock, uh, <laughs> send me a check valve, uh, comes with a power supply, yeah. It comes yes. with the uh, an extra one, which is always an nice. extra one, yes. like, like a, you get yeah. one with the Steam Deck, a 45 yeah. watt uh, USB power supply. I think I have it here. <laughs> oh, the, the, the drawer of mystery returns. It's been a minute, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look at that! Oh man, that's that's the UK plug. Yeah, it's it's still weird yeah. seeing those. It's, it's, but yeah, it's, it's like just a regular Type C, um, like, forty-five watt power supply. It works. Nice. What was it? Was it? Was it taste like when it's plugged in? 
Uh, it tastes spicy. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Dell <laughs> USB C 65 watt power supply. Yeah, but that, that, that that, that, hang on a minute. Now that's <laughs> Dell. There, there's a healthy dose of because fuck you. That's why we're Dell pricing in that. Yes, uh, yeah. the, this uh, brand new one of these costs like seventy or eighty dollars. You're not buying that. The company you work for is. <laughs> yeah, you 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 <laughs> I bought this one that. secondhand yeah. on eBay for forty. 40 pounds yeah <laughs> sure sure not 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 embezzled from the nhs not uh, at all. no the one that i have from the nhs is in that laptop back there, back there <laughs> see oh gc cares uh <laughs> ladies and gentlemen i think on that kleptomanic uh maniacs uh no. kleptomanic. Kleptomaniacal oh, kleptomatic. <laughs> kleptomatic baby <laughs> ecstatic kleptomatic hickory dickory docks ladies and gentlemen yeah the subtitles just Shot the bet on that. You can <laughs> always. <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to break Google. You can always check us out, man. 8.30 Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. We're doing a bunch of stuff. Check out the schedule. We're always loud live and uh, screeching about random Linuxy things when we're not doing something else. Anyway, get in touch with me at Vin Stone on Twitter or at Vin on our federated timeline, mass.linuxgamecast.com. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm Jordan. I guess this week I'm going to be experimenting with my own personal compatibility with a bunch of Type-C USB docks, so I'm going to stick them in my mouth and report the results <laughs> at The Burning Fool on Twitter or Twitch.tv. Oh, you're going to be burning, burning all right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be a little crispy. <laughs> Uh, the, the very apropos, but yeah, if you'd like to discuss the... Um, niceties of USB-C docs by all means uh, on Twitter at unaccounted for uh, I'm always up for you know learning new things and uh, if you do end up um, saying something that's wrong I will immediately point it out as well so <laughs> on you <laughs> ladies and gentlemen prepare yourself for credits I'm prepared ah yes we have implemented through buttplug.io <laughs> <laughs> Which I still love that the documentation URL is how.i.put.buttplug.in. That's it's great. We got we got to thank our advisors. Who are they? They're our biggest. And are there? And we got our executive producers as well. They're scrolling up soon. Video catches up. Barbara M. Scott Michaud, Tom McCass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku, George, Pebble, Tomaj, and Unoid, who's also on the buckwall. And our Chicago Kicks cast here, Super Death Stoat, and Abstraction, Nixon's Pyramid. With the C-Notes, Renault, um, Rider X C-Notes. C-Notes? Yes, the Sea monsters <laughs> Rider X Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin Frostclaw, Noven, David like, Dark, Wing, and Sis. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just our favorite C-Notes. The C-Note gave you 530 and you were confused. Uh, <laughs> Charlings, uh, Kelsa, North Ranger, Craig Dr. H, Dorner uh, Dork, Geek, Daniel Douglas, Ramsawana, Paul Michael, Rudy, <laughs> Hey, Jeff, Monica, Jim, Pebble, Jack, Rudy, Tom, Delicio, Strider's Sacred, there, Jonas, Dancing Rula, Joe, Mark, Mayor, <laughs> DSN Tane, Joe, which I need to, I need to update the uh, DSN Joe. Ah, I forgot. Never mind. Yes. Uh, all the people picked up stuff at the studio. Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Lynx, Nero, Aldeus, Noclis, John, Eshep, Gamatron, and Unoid. Unoid! Unoid. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, take care of your docs and make sure uh, stay away. <laughs> Get all your docs in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Only you can Here's help the... prevent unwashed cashews. Wash your dock, please. Ah, the unwashed cashew. <laughs> Dying <of fire. laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>